Each one of the five ways goes back to at least one, uh, if not many, historical traditions that were developed around the world, and not exclusively in the East from Buddhism, but they also link to uh, traditions from other parts of the world, the West, Christianity, and so forth. Because, as I say, I tend to see the worldwide contemplative tradition as a unity. You could look back from the five ways and you could see the whole history of the development of uh, uh, contemplation from its shamanic origins through the arising of civilizations and through the seminal discoveries of the Buddha particularly and then um, the uh, Mahayana sort of merging with Zen and what came out of that and then the Vajrayana and then the sort of more non-dual approaches all of that is behind it and we could go I could go into a long talk and have uh, elsewhere as to the rich historical origins of uh, each of the five ways they have a past but they also have I believe a future because they represent reworkings of those traditions. I don't claim that these are those traditions. I am attempting to make, represent a secular, modern approach to these things. The, the, the spiritual clout I don't want to lose. The liberating clout that, that they can, each one of them can lead to classical enlightenment, can lead to what I believe is the core spiritual experience of humanity. Uh, certainly don't want to lose that. Cultural trappings, doctrinal trappings, things that are uh, based on mythology, um, I, or things that you know, don't seem to have an empirical basis or don't seem probable logically. I have tried to take that out for better or worse. It's an approach that will work for certain people and not work for other people, like all approaches. Uh, every approach has strengths and weaknesses. And that's good, because different things work for different people. This is one direction that a person could take if they wanted to explore what can be done creatively with the, what has come down to us from the past. Just one possible way to go. If you look carefully at the five-way system, you'll notice it's all built on binary contrasts. A binary means one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one contrast, okay? Uh, like uh, black versus white, right? That's a binary contrast. That's intentional because when you study, um, when you do functional imaging of brain changes, uh, as the result of whatever, uh, meditation or anything else, you can't actually image the brain function. You can just have two contrasting conditions and compare them. So I designed the system to work that way. Uh, there's a contrast between tracking ordinary sensory activity and tracking corresponding restful states. There's a contrast between intentionally creating feel a positive feel image talk and just observing any and all uh, uh, feel image talk. There's a contrast between working with the subjective uh, somatic visual and auditory experience versus objective somatic visual and audit auditory experience. The contrast between relative rest, where you're focusing on restful uh, qualities, and absolute rest, where you do nothing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any one of those uh, presents itself as a natural thing that can be studied with uh, the imaging technology. So when I say that the five ways have a future, hopefully, by that I mean they've been set up based on what I know that scientists need when they do this kind of research so that it can be easy, their effects can be easily researched in subsequent generations.